Hello Bookworms, I'm Becca. In today's video I'm going to be doing a book haul for all of the books that I have gotten during lockdown. These books are ones I have ordered online and then recently as things have started opening back up I was able to go and get some books in person which was an experience. So I have a huge amount of books to show you guys, like an obscene amount of books. So this probably is going to be more of a rapid fire book haul, just giving a quick synopsis for each of the books. So yeah, let's get started. The first one I have to show you guys is Michigan vs. The Boys by Carrie S. Allen. This is a young adult contemporary about a girl named Michigan who is playing for the girls hockey team at her school, but when there are budget cuts and her hockey team gets shut down, she plays for the boys team. It's really good. So far, I have my bookmark in it. I started reading it for the Slapchat readathon that Alex and I did, but I haven't finished it yet. I'm about halfway through and I'm really enjoying it, so I need to finish it soon. Next, I have Stay Gold by Tobley McSmith. This is a young adult own voices book with a trans main character named Pony, who is going stealth at his new school and ends up getting in a romance with a cheerleader who's also trying to fly under the radar. It sounds like it's going to be really good. Alex says it is absolutely incredible and is a huge Tobley stan now, so I know that I need to read this as soon as possible. Like the rest of these books, I'm sure that will be a running theme throughout this video, me saying that I actually need to read the books that I'm buying. Go figure. The next one I have to show you is A Good Kind of Trouble by Lisa Moore Ramey. This is a debut middle grade novel in which we follow a girl named Shayla who has always followed the rules and is just trying to get through seventh grade in one piece until her older sister is in Involved with the Black Lives Matter movement and is very vocal with it, but Sheila doesn't know if that's the route that she wants to take. But after going to a protest, she knows that she wants to take some sort of stand, so she ends up wearing a black armband to school to show her support, and people start taking sides. Sheila isn't sure if she wants to speak out or not still, but she knows that some rules are worth breaking. So I feel like this is going to be following Sheila in her journey of finding her voice and figuring out how she can fight for a cause that she feels passionately about and I love that in a middle grade book. The next book I have to show you guys is another middle grade called The Year We Fell From Space and it's by Amy Sarek King. She also writes under the pen name A.S. King in her young adult books and I have a whole stack of all of her books because basically Lala, Books and Lala, did a video where she unpacked all of the A.S. King books and kind of gave a guide to A.S. King for beginners and after listening to her talk about all the books I bought all of her books. Yeah so this is a middle grade book about a girl named Liberty Johansson. I'm not really sure what it's about but I know that all of A.S. King's novels have sort of a surrealist element to it but I do know that this one deals with divorce and depression, anxiety, things like that. Next is another middle grade book also by Amy Sarah King called Me and Marvin Gardens and this is about a creature named Marvin who is the size of a dog but he's not like a dog. He's got hooves like a pig but claws like a wolf. He smiles, he listens to commands and stories and he eats plastic. So this is more of an environmentalist middle grade book which I think is really cool. I'm really interested to see what sorts of discussions take place in this book because I don't think that I've read a middle grade that necessarily talks about the environment and impacts on the environment yet so that will be really interesting and I love this cover. I think the cover is super cute. Okay I have another middle grade for you guys because I'm just loving my middle grades lately and it is Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson. I'm not entirely sure what this book is about and I'm trying to be quick with the synapses but I think that it's about a girl who is going to try to find her voice and as I flipped through it to see if it was written in verse or prose or anything I noticed that the um the chapter headings are in Spanish with the English translation under it and I love that so much. Also on the back it says be bold, be brave, be beautiful, be brilliant, be your best. I love that. I just love middle grades so much, especially ones with powerful messages, so I cannot wait to unpack this story and see what it is going to be about. The next book I have to show you guys is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I talked about this in one of my videos 
recently because I just love Elizabeth Acevedo's books. They're incredible. This one is about sisters who don't know that they're sisters until their dad dies and then everything is uncovered. I've also heard that it talks about forgiveness and like implied forgiveness instead of just flat out apologizing something like that i'm not sure but i'm excited let's see and this one is written in verse like the poet x so it should be a quick read okay the next four are all by a.s king because like i said i bought all of her books the first one being everybody sees the ants i have heard about this one the most i feel like but i'm not entirely sure what it's about. The next A.S. King book is Still Life with Tornado and I've seen this one around a lot. It's about a girl named Sarah who's an artist. She starts seeing different versions of herself from different points in her life and they're all worried about her future. So that sounds really interesting. I love this cover. It's super floppy too. The next one I feel like was super popular back in the day but I just never picked it up and it is Ask the Passengers. And this is a young adult book about a girl named Astrid who watches the planes fly overhead and talks to the passengers in the plane about her problems. And I think that it also has to do with Astrid questioning her sexuality. So that is really interesting. This is an old one, I feel like. I remember seeing it back in the day before I even started booktube. The back says 2012, 2013. I thought it was a little bit older than that. I swear I saw this book when I was in high school, but maybe not. And the last A.S. King book I have to share with you guys is Please Ignore Vera Dietz. And this is a young adult book about a girl named Vera, obviously, who has secretly always been in love with her best friend, Charlie, but when Charlie dies in dark circumstances, Vera has to decide whether she's going to come out and try to clear his name. It's blurbed by Ellen Hopkins, who writes really gritty, dark young adult. So I feel like this one is going to be a trip to read, honestly. All right, the next one I have to show you is a young doll graphic novel, and I've been talking and crying about it nonstop, but I have to show it off. It's Check Please Volume 2 by Ngozi Ukazu, and this follows Eric Biddy Biddle's junior and senior year on the men's hockey team at Samwell University and his relationship with Jack. It is so good, you guys. I feel like this was the perfect end to an amazing duology. These actually started out as webcomics, so I'm glad that I have them bound so that I can revisit them whenever I want. The art style is absolutely incredible. I love the colors that were used on this cover. If you guys have not read Check Please, you need to because it's incredible. It is so good. It is so wholesome. I just can't say enough good things about these books. I'm stacking the books up next to me on a stool and I feel like by the end of the video you're definitely going to be able to see them. They're going to be higher than me. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> the next book I have to show you guys is By Any Means Necessary and it's by Candace Montgomery. This is about a boy named Tori who is working really hard to be the first person in his family to go to college but on the day he moves in he gets a phone call saying that the bank is foreclosing on the bee farm that his uncle left to him. So now Tori has to balance his old life and his new life and when the bee farm goes up for auction, Tori has to make a choice between his family and his future. And this I believe is her sophomore novel, but I also bought her debut. And that is Home and Away. And this is about a girl named Tasia Quirk who is from a wealthy family. She's got great friends great family. She's fabulous. And she's the only girl that plays on the boys football team. So that sounds like it's going to be so good. I don't know if you can see, but in her sunglasses, it's a football field. I don't know why I'm getting all of these books that have to do with sports. I'm the least sporty person ever, but I do like reading about it. Okay, the last of the books that I got online is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I just read this book. This is a young adult own voices novel about a boy named Felix Love who wants nothing more than to fall in love, but he feels like 
It will never happen to him because he has too much baggage and he's one marginalization too many. And then to top it all off at his summer art program, somebody anonymously puts up an art installation dead naming him and then starts sending transphobic messages to him on Instagram and Felix knows that he needs to devise some sort of plan so he creates a catfish plan and ends up in a quasi love triangle. It is a messy 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 book but it was so good. I loved it though. I did give it five stars. It was so so good. Okay now I have a huge bag of books that I got from Barnes and Noble. The first one being Love and Other Carnivores Plants by Florence Gonzalez. I don't know if I said that right. I am sorry if I did not. I don't know much about this book but I know that it deals with eating disorders and mental illness and it's also a queer book. So honestly I picked it up because of the cover and the title. The next one I have to show you I'm so excited for you guys. I didn't even realize that it was out yet. And I almost screamed in the middle of Vines and Noble. And it is Camp by Elsie Rossin. This is a book about a summer camp for queer teens. And we follow a boy named Randy Kappelhoff. And he loves going to this camp and being in the musical and all of that. But he also falls for this other boy named Hudson who is very masculine and only likes other mask men. Randy returns the next year to camp as Dell and tries to be super mask to get Hudson to fall for him even if it means giving up things he loves like painting his nails and doing things that are typically more feminine. So this book talks a lot about toxic masculinity and we love to see it. The next one I have to show you guys is Dear Universe by Florence Gonzalez. So I have another one by her, but Love and Other Carnivorous Plants was her debut novel. So this one is her sophomore novel and it's about a girl named chamomile and she is dealing with a lot of things like anxiety and going to school and trying to finish her college applications while her father is also suffering from a terminal illness so it sounds like it's going to be something it says the tagline is i'm sorry for interrupting you with my presence and that just hit me. That just really hit me and I needed to grab it. Next we have This Coven Won't Break by Isabel Sterling. This is the sequel to These Witches Won't Burn and I don't really know what this one is about. I want to go in blind. Even though I didn't love These Witches Don't Burn, I still kind of want to continue on with the series because it's kind of interesting and I want to see what route this book takes, if that makes any sense. Next I have one that I'm so excited to share with you guys. It is The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. And this is about a boy named Michael who's a mixed race gay teen living in London. And he feels like he's never like Greek enough or black enough and he doesn't know what his identity is. And then he discovers the world of drag. And I am so ready for this. It's gonna be so good. I've heard nothing but amazing, incredible things about this book. And I cannot wait to read it. I'm so excited. Ooh, what is the book like underneath? <gasps> it has flamingos on it. Oh my gosh, you guys, my dream is coming true with these hardcover books looking so good. Yes. I'm so happy. This tower is very precariously balanced. I wish you could see. You can't see. It's up to my shoulders. Let's see. I'm gonna bring you guys in. I'm changing the angle ever so slightly so you can watch my book stack rise to be taller than I am. The next book I have is Lucky Caller by Emma Mills. I bought this one because I just love Emma Mills so much but all of her books are getting a cover like this which I don't love. So I wasn't going to get it, but I just love this author so much that I can't not get it. So, but honestly, all of her books are so good. I don't even care. I feel like I'm playing Jenga now with all of these heckin' books. The next one I have to show you guys is Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. This is about a Puerto Rican girl named Juliet who lives in the Bronx and comes out as a lesbian before flying across the country to pursue an internship in Seattle under her favorite feminist writer but the way that I understand it is the writer begins doing things that are 
like quietly problematic and Julia needs to decide whether or not she's going to stand up for what's right. So it sounds like it's going to be amazing. I've heard nothing but incredible things about this book. I'm literally just waiting for this whole tower to just topple over. If you guys could see how much it sways every time I put a book on top, I'm just, I, oh, good thing we only have a few more. Next is another one that I'm super excited about is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This is a young adult book about a girl named Liz who always believed that she was too black, too poor, too awkward to amount to anything, but she has big dreams of attending a super elite college, playing in their orchestra and becoming a doctor. But when her financial aid falls through, she decides that she is going to get the scholarship that her school gives out to the prom queen and king, even though she is not about that at all. So I am really intrigued by this. What school gives out a scholarship for the prom king and queen? And that sounds like the most Midwestern thing that I've ever heard in my ding ding life. Next I have The Henna Wars by Adiba Yagadar. I feel like I butchered that. This is a book about girls Nisha and Flavia who enter a school competition to create their own business and they create a henna business but they also end up crushing on each other which is super cute but they are Muslim and their families don't support that at all so I'm interested to see like how it all unfolds. I believe this is a middle grade book. Aww, I love it. Isn't the cover super cute too? I love that. This is about to fall. It's like the leaning tower of books. It's so bad. I have three more to show you guys. We're almost done. This one is We Speak in Storms by Natalie Lund. And this is about a town where 50 years ago a tornado ripped through and destroyed everything and now there's another storm looming. So I'm not really sure what exactly this is going to be about but it's about like breaking the cycles I think and pushing past the pain facing the world and finding yourself so I just think that it, the premise sounds really interesting and the title grabbed me so I'm I'm gonna give it a try. Next I have a book by one of my favorite authors but I want to go in completely blind so it is allegedly it's by Tiffany D. Jackson I want to say that this is, I believe this is Tiffany D. Jackson's debut book and there's going to be some sort of mystery. I don't really know what it's about. I just know that there's going to be some sort of mystery. I don't want to even read the back. Well, I read the back already, but I don't want to think too much about it, if that makes any sense. I want to just go in completely blind because I feel like Tiffany D. Jackson's books are best when you just jump right into them. The last book I have to show you guys is another middle grade book and this is another one that I'm not going to explain too much about because honestly I don't understand too much about it and I'm I just can't wait to read the story. It is called, I'm taking a step up for this one, it is called A Mall Unbound and it's by Aisha Saeed and this book is about a girl who lives in Pakistan. After she offends her village's ruling family, she has to serve them. So this is a middle grade book about indentured servitude, you guys, and I think that that is so important and this cover is stunning. Amal also has dreams of becoming a teacher. So it's about her trying to become educated while also being a servant to this family and it takes place in Pakistan. So that is going to be really unique. I've never read anything like this. I cannot wait to read it and let you guys know some more about it. Well, <laughs> there you guys go. Those are all the books that I have acquired over the past few months. I'm just gonna back away slowly. Let me know if you have read any of the books I mentioned in this video and what you thought about them. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below to see more bookish videos. That's all I got for you guys today and I will see you next time. Bye.